Hey, everybody, it's the coach. This is Thursday Night Football on EA Sports. On tap is what should be a pretty good matchup between the Washington Redskins and the Minnesota Vikings. I'll see you again at halftime as we preview some of the action coming up on Sunday. But for now, it's Thursday Night Football. And on the call, as always, it's Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Now we find ourselves at the stadium that played host to Super Bowl 52, the wondrous U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game, and that was in evidence a moment ago. Fireworks, pyrotechnics, you name it, this crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up between the Washington Redskins and the Minnesota Vikings. Hi again, everyone. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. And Charles, you look at this Vikings ball club. They come in in the midst of a pretty bad stretch here. Losers of five straight. So many different reasons teams hit the losing skids, but the best way out of it, something has to happen positive early in the game. Meanwhile, for the visiting Redskins, they were winners last time out, so they'll be looking, Charles, to make it two in a row. And what I enjoyed when I watched their game tape and their victory last week is they put it together in every phase. Good offense, good defense, and some key plays on special teams. Let's see if they can get that second win in a row. Lurching closer toward the midway point of this NFL season, and we're underway on EA Sports. This is taken at the three. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. So here's the Viking offense making their way out. Leading him out, the second-year man from UCLA, drafted number 10 overall, it's Josh Rosen. Rosen on first and 10. He'll get that to devalve the tight end. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 17 yards, first down, Vikings. Play action here with Rosen. This will be caught by Brown. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. He'll get 15 and a Vikings first down. Back-to-back -to -back good plays have him on the move on first down. They'll run with a third-year man. This is Tariq Cohen. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. They'll run on second down with Cohen. He'll get it to the 40. Broke a tackle there to get some extra yardage. The line to gain is the 33 on third down. Out of the gun, here's Josh Rosen. Well, the two men come together, and it's incomplete. Excellent work defensively, brings up fourth down. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what did you see? Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. Now it's scooped up, and this is a live football. Defenders giving chase, but I don't think they're going to get there. Into the end zone. Washington Redskins touchdown. We talk about it a lot. One of the dangers of the long field goal, you got to kind of hit it low and drive it. That makes it susceptible to a block here. Not only do they block it, they return it. And how about how well they did on the return where they didn't create a penalty? Oftentimes in that type of a scrambling situation, someone will clip, someone will block below the waist, right? It, you name it. In this case, though, that didn't happen. They formed it up, and he took it all the way back for a touchdown. Gold able to tack on the extra point, and it's now a 7-0 game. After the touchdown, it's Robbie Gold now to kick it away. This is taken at the three. 
And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. The last time they had a little bit of a special teams breakdown. That field goal was blocked. Yeah, and everything has to be precise in the kicking game. Snap, hold, kick. Obviously, the blocking to keep people out. So what you really want to do is get in there and get six points and take the pressure off of those guys. They'll start things on first with Torrey Cohen. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. And the offensive starters for the Vikings. And this certainly doesn't seem like an ideal situation for them because they're coming in on a losing streak. And they've got the quick turnaround right here to Thursday night. But maybe that's for the best. Get right back on the horse and go at it again and not dwell on the losing that they've had in recent weeks. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. That one good for a first down pickup of 18 yards. Rosen now off the bootleg. He's got a first down and then some inside the 40. Give him 18 there and give the Vikings a first down. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you get much more balance than this. Big time run. Big time pass. A one-two combination. Looked pretty good. How about that? They, they, let's, see if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. A look here on your screen at how Washington's going to line up defensively. They've certainly had their struggles against the run at the 30th-ranked unit out of 32 teams in the NFL. The numbers are definitely not in their favor, but every time I click on the film and watch them, I see stretches where they play against the run really well. Their biggest problem, when they give up those explosive runs, those 30, 40, 50-yard runs. That'll... And the Redskins do get to him. He goes down for a sack. Ronald Blair able to record his fifth sack of the season. And they weren't in zone coverage. They were in man, and each man did his job. And that looked like vintage, old-school coverage, didn't it? Man coverage reminded me of an old Raiders team. They had a Hall of Famer at one corner and a Defensive Player of the Year at the other, and they just locked people down. And it's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. And it's going to bring up fourth down. Well, that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, you'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, have them back on their heels. Now they're set up nicely at the 45-yard line after the missed field goal from 55. There's Breeze. Well, listen, now, no kick from 50-plus is a gimme, but here you're indoors in a dome. You'd think Let's ideal go. conditions. Yeah, and it's one that he would expect himself to make, not just us expecting him to make it. Over the years, my theory is very simple. The athletic ability of kickers continues to get better and better. Check their background. They were all county, all state, and other positions, not just soccer players. These guys expect themselves to be great as well. Now Breeze. And he gets this one to Ridley complete. It's a gain of five. And that'll make it second and ten. Second and Off the play fate to Kamara, it's Breeze. Looking left sideline, incomplete. And the incomplete pass on second down. Now they need a big play here, third and ten. Breeze going to throw. And that'll wind up incomplete. Bold play call there. Now it's fourth down. You hear the calls for a penalty, but I just don't think so. I think in this situation, the defender was making sure his guy couldn't hold on to the football. So I don't see anything that warranted a flag. No, I'm with you. There was contact, but I'm Come happy on, they man. kept that Let's flag go. in the back pocket. Let's go old school there. That's absolutely a great coffin Check corner that. punt. People, Someone's people. put some time in working on that. Hasn't Seems it? like every year these guys get better and better. It's amazing how they can command that football through the air. Yeah, the pressure gets to him and down he goes. Back at the four-yard line. The DN Jonathan Allen making sure his presence is felt. Now following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. They run. This is Cohen. 
And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play. And they're going to be staring at a third and long here. We think, Brandon, I like the intensity this defense is showing right here in these first few drives. They're not just holding the line because they're doing their job, but they're doing more than that, aren't they? They're getting a nice push into the offensive backfield. And a great example right there for the loss on the tackle. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing, often all... Rush comes and they block it. Touchdown, Redskins. Touchdown, Let's go, Redskins. touchdowns, baby. Let's go. There are plenty of ways for a special teams coach to get excited. And when you block a punt into the end zone and recover for a score, yeah, he's going to be jumping up and down a big way. And as a punter, you know that that clock is ticking. He just didn't get it off in time. Goal to add the extra point. And it's good to make it 14 0. Makes the score, Redskins. So the very rare blocked punt, scooped, and returned for a touchdown. What an exciting play. After the touchdown, it's Robbie Gold now to kick it away. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. Here's the Redskin defense. They get set for this next possession. And we get a glance at something that they've certainly done well in this game, and that's block kicks. And they've made it a mission. They've made it part of who they are. It's not just making good tackles, knocking the ball free on defense. It's going after kicks because that creates an advantage for their entire team. From the shotgun, it's Rosen. And they've got the hookup. This is Olsen. Push of a foul, roughing the passer, defense. So a pretty early first quarter roughing the passer Let's go. Let's go. penalty. Let's go. Seems like the officials are going to let everyone know they're taking charge of this game. They're always going to protect the quarterback. Now Rosen looking to throw. He finds his man, the tight end Olsen. That reception, it brings him up to the 700 plateau. He's at 700 career NFL catches now. And that club in baseball, a rather exclusive. And with a flag down, he goes down. So they're able to sack him. Now the penalty looks like it could be holding. Let's find out. So they will take the sack instead of the penalty. And it takes another down off the series. But the biggest one of all, do you want to tell the guy to just get the sack that it no longer counts? No. No, not at all. And the pressure gets to him again. Bradley Roby, the ex-Buckeye, with a corner blitz of the sack. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Now it's Gim. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And it'll be Redskins football now with a first and 10. Ready, 5-9. Mike 51. Rabbit, 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 rabbit. This is Alvin Kamara who made the Pro Bowl in each of his first two NFL seasons. Only a couple there as he'll be brought down about the 28. A gain of two. Throwing on second and eight. Breeze gets this one to use check. It'll be hit down at the 33. Five yards on the play. A five-yard pickup on the play. And it's third down. Here's Kamara trying to run for it. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. Let's go, baby. Let's go. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Let's go. First down, Redskins. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. This one caught by Ridley. And a five-yard gain gets him to the 42. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. And that'll be incomplete. 
Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. To throw is Breeze. That's complete to his running back, Camara. Get ready, get ready, get ready. It's a game of 10. Charles' Thursday night game, I think a lot of teams probably say shrink the playbook somewhat. Is that correct? I think you're right about that because you just don't have the amount of time that you have in a normal week to put in a full playbook. So as you said, you shrink the playbook, pick out the plays that work best for you. You know what else you're looking for? Who are the freshest guys coming off the last game to play on a Thursday night? Guys have a little extra pep in their step. You go to them early and often. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Breeze now to throw. Out of the backfield, that's complete to Kamara. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them, and not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. One of the money routes for any offense, the drag route. So tough to defend because the receiver can stop at any point and make himself available to the quarterback and get a completion. But I love the communication we saw there. All the defenders pointing out the receiver, where he was going, and then they're able to rally to the ball after the catch and stop him short of a first down. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. And we don't want to call this desperation time, especially in the second quarter, but you're down. I don't want to. No, but well, let me finish. Okay, my bad. You're down three scores already. You've done nothing offensively, nothing on the scoreboard. That's that's not a good combination. I think you just, you called, a I think you just called a desperation time. I think you did. But let's face it, you mentioned this to me in a break earlier in the game. The energy level hasn't been there right from the start. We've noticed that. They've got to find a way to get on their toes and start punching instead of retreating to use a boxing analogy. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 41. That backs him up one yard and brings up third down. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. A good pick up there, 21 yards. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Rosen will throw. He'll get this off to Jamal Williams. A gain of four on the play, and that'll bring up second down. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Off the play fake, here's Rosen. He's going to air this thing out deep for Thomas. And this is going to wind up incomplete. The coverage there too strong on the deep ball, and now they face a third down. On third down, Rosen. He's going to dump that off to his running back, Cohen. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. Let's go, let's go. Going quickly here to Thomas. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. That was the eighth play of the drive, so a somewhat fitting pickup of eight yards. Check 59, Mike. Check 59, Mike. The 59. Now they'll try the jet sweep here. 
And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. The Vikings on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This time they face a third and two. Rosen off the play action. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. Marquise Brown, his fifth touchdown now on the year. As they are now on the board here in the first half. And he's a little bit on the shorter side as a receiver. Maybe sometimes for the defense, tough to find the little guys, right? Yeah, sometimes they get lost in the traffic, but usually what it means is that rather than just winning with height or even speed, they use their quickness to find a way to get open. Well, tall, short, wide, skinny, whatever. There it results in a touchdown. Extra point good by Prater, and that'll cut the lead to 17-7. After the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Out comes Calvin Ridley and the offense for their next drive. Sitting right around the midpoint of the season, on pace for 1,000 yards. Good year so far, and I'm sure film study being devoted to him a little bit more on the other side. They have to because the pace that he's carrying right now, if you're, if you're pushing a 1,000-yard pace as a receiver, that means he warrants your attention. And right now, precision is going on with their offense. Kind of like that timepiece you wear on your wrist. You know, the good stuff. You gotta knock that off somehow. Chip away at that timing. Change things up a little bit and make them go to other things and make them do those things better. Yeah, try to make him up. Under a heavy rush and down he goes. Set, baby. Set, baby. Ready. After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. False start, offense. Oh, jumping early from his tight end spot. Maybe trying to get a jump start on that route. Yeah, I think you're exactly right Ready. about that. Ready. And oftentimes when you see that, that means the play call was supposed to come in his direction, and he was eager to go catch a pass. Following the penalty, it's Camaro. And nothing doing here is this time the run maybe gets him back to the line of scrimmage, but that's it. No gain on the play this time, and it'll be a third and long situation coming up. Breeze now. That's to his running back. It's Alvin Kamara. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense. Ouch, you thought you had the defensive stand. Roughing the passer wipes it out. What does every defense talk about? Three and out, right? Thought they were able to get off the field. Not so. Now the pass hauled in by Kenny Stills. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. It'll go as a pickup of 14 and a Washington first down. And a Redskin first down. Now a first down carry. It's Kamara. And he only manages a couple here down to about the 38-yard line. Keep playing hard, A gain of two. Brings up second and eight. They keep it on the ground. This time, it's Miller. Give him three yards, and now they're left needing a conversion here on third and six. Now Breeze on third down. And that is incomplete. You've always been very good about checking my math. Am I correct? That's the first time that it's been incomplete when they've thrown it to him? Yes, he had caught every other ball that's coming his way. So they feel like they've got something really good going there, and they're going to continue to go there until the defense makes an adjustment and takes it away. Well, they finally made an adjustment there. We'll see if they can build on that stop. These kickers now, it's like we take them for granted. Kicks like that used to be such a big deal, and now you just expect them to make it. Yeah, you're exactly right, and we shouldn't take them for granted. But I have a theory about it. You want to hear it? Yeah. They are more athletic now than ever before. Talk about kickers. Trace their backgrounds, trace their history. You'll find that they were big-time athletes all along, but their kicking was so prevalent that we made them specialists. Yeah, and now those 50-plus yarders seem easy for some reason. 
And out now come the Vikings. I guess they have to feel a little gratified to at least get on the board last time, but still work to do. No doubt about it. I wonder now if they're going to try to increase the urgency a little bit, maybe pump up the pace, maybe go two minutes. Who knows? Let's see what they decide to do. And they'll wind up getting this to the 37. Gain of nine. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Now they'll run it with Cohen, and he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. On first down, they go right back to Cohen. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. 10 yards, and it's good for a Viking first down. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. Coming up at the half, a reminder, we go back to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman. He'll have a look back at our first half as well as a look ahead to what's coming up later this weekend. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Looking to go back to Thomas again, but it's going to be second down. Rosen again on second and ten. And Olsen over the middle. Takes this to the 45. Broken tackle. Bought him a little extra space. Here's Rosen. And that is incomplete. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. They're going on fourth down. Rosen underneath. He's got Olsen. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. Well, they deemed it four down territory, and they got four yards to pick up the first. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. Here now is second and ten, again from the 41. Throwing again, it's Rosen. Open man is Cantrell. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. They'll break the huddle and come up on the ninth play of this drive, needing five yards on third down. They want to go to the air again with Rosen. This is brought in by Gibson. The Redskins now going to use the first of their three timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. So on is Matt Prater now to try a field goal here. And remember, he had one blocked earlier. And the 12-year veteran knocks it right through. And that cuts into the deficit. It's now 20-10. to 10. So a good kick that time, and that might help to get the negative thoughts out of the mind from that earlier block. Especially since this was not a chippy, so he had to get that one out kind of low. But his line does a nice job of protecting. He's able to convert for three. The Redskins offense now, they head back onto the field. You've got under a minute to go here until halftime. You've got the good size lead. No need to do anything crazy. No, there really is no need to do anything crazy. The smart play, go ahead and take your lead into the locker room and then try and add to it in the second half. But there's a part of me that looks at this and says, first half going my way, I have a little bit of a cushion. Let's go ahead and try and extend things. If you've got some good plays drawn up, you might want to think about them right here. So they'll take the yardage and tack on 15 more for the face mask. Talk about a play that absolutely costs you in the end. Just trying to do your job, right? Trying to get him on the ground. Next thing you know, they'll march up another 15 against your squad. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Breeze now 11 of 16 through the air. It's first and 10. From the gun, it's Breeze. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. Flash the stick skills, but didn't get a ton from it. Stop short of the 35. Looking to throw again on second down. Breeze. Ebron's got it. And this time, not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31 yard line. Now a signal and a timeout call as it comes with nine seconds to go in this first half of play. And his kick is absolutely perfect. 
And that will stretch the lead up to 13. So a big play before the end of the half to get him into this spot, and they cash in with three. How about the one-two to the solar plexus on that one? The big play, the field goal, not much time left on the clock. That's the way to go into the half. So we've reached the intermission in what right now is a 13-point game. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. We'll get back to you and CD in a minute. First, it's time to take a look at what we've got coming your way this weekend in the NFL. The best of the early games on Sunday may just be in Buffalo, where the Bills face a big test as they get set to host the Philadelphia Eagles. Lots to look forward to in the late afternoon window as well, one being a late start in Foxborough, where it'll be the Patriots taking on the Cleveland Browns. And finally, on Monday Night Football, two of the super teams of the 1970s back at it. Dolphins and Steelers from Heinz Field to wrap up Week 8. In our game, it was the right arm of Drew Brees that led the way in the first half. His guys lead on the road in Minneapolis as we send you back up to U.S. Bank Stadium and Brandon Godden. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll wind up getting an extra couple yards here for his trouble as he'll bring this one out to the 27. Out there, ready for this next drive, the Redskins offense. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys. But be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. Again, it's Kamara. And it's been like this all night long. Nowhere to run as they stop him behind the line. This will be a two-yard loss on the play. And that'll lead here to a third down. Bree's going to throw. And plays like that are exactly what this defense needs here early in the second half to give it a little spark. I think their halftime adjustment, defense. what they talked about, maybe it was just a little inspirational speech. Who knows? But looks like they're ready to go. Ready. He was trying to get at that time to 10 again. Well, the crowd doesn't like that. Was going to bring up fourth. Now it's first. <laughs> they don't like it at all, do they? It brings them back into it, but really not in a positive way. Now they're angry. That can jangle the team a little bit as well. That's interference. Ruined that series of downs for them. Offense. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Now after the false start, here's second and seven. Off the play fake to Kamara, it's Breeze. It's complete, Stills. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. 28 yards the game there on the catch and run. Breeze leaves this one with Kamara. And a pickup of about four down inside the 10 to the 8-yard line. 95, 56, 95, 56. To throw on second and six, Breeze. And he is into the end zone for a Washington touchdown. Ted Ginn. His second touchdown on the season. And the Redskins are able to stretch the lead out further. Always important to get the first score of the second half. Now you start to pull away a little bit and get some breathing room going. And now we find out about the fortitude of the group that's behind because they were counting on getting into the game a little bit more, right? Maybe they get the first score. That doesn't happen. It looks almost insurmountable, but it's not. Let's see how hard they play the rest of the game. Ready. Well, it's a Gruden family trait to be aggressive, and Jay's going to go for two here. They're going to try and run, and he is not going to get in there. He stops short of the goal line, and the lead 
is going to stay right where it is. So the defense gets the stop. I know it's situation to situation, but who has more pressure there, offense or defense, when they go for two? I, st I truly believe it's the defense has more pressure because the offense has an entire playbook wide open from the two-yard line. You can run it. You can throw it. So defensively, I think most teams are going to be aggressive and force the issue and try and bring pressure. Let's go! Let's go. It's the Vikings' turn on offense. We get ready for their first possession of the second half. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the how time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second most, half? Most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10. Kind of a starter or an opener, whatever, they, whatever terminology they use. Just something to get you off to a quick start. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. Demarius Thomas, the intended receiver. And that'll make it third down. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. And now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. This defense is continuing to contest every deep ball that is thrown downfield. And look, it doesn't matter whether you're playing man or zone. Eventually, that becomes man on man. And you've got to trust yourself and go up at that moment of truth and make a play on the football. A good return there. Call it 13 go, yards. Go, go. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. A good starting spot for the Redskins as they come up first and 10 at their 36-yard line. They'll try to get the offense going with Kamara. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Throwing on second and three. Breeze. Rush coming, and he's taken down. The so-called little guys putting the pressure on. That was a strong safety. When I was in college, we often called that a lightning blitz. From the gun on third down, Breeze. He's going to float this one deep right side. A 50-50 ball here, and it's intercepted. Isaiah Oliver with the INT. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. If they needed a break. They needed to make a play here in the third quarter defensively. They did that. Now they got to go quickly and get some points on the board. And the best part is that they made their own break. Taking the ball away. Now they just look at their offense and say, guys, let's go. Come on, capitalize on this one. Meanwhile, they take a shot to start the drive, but this is going to wind up incomplete. On second and ten, Rosen. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. On the draw, this is Cohen. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. A pretty good effort there, nine yards, but not enough. We'll likely see the punt team now on fourth down. And after that type of a run, there's some talking going on down on the field, but it's not trash talking. The guy who just carried the ball, he's going back and telling his offensive line, great job, keep it up, and we'll break that one soon. Here's Ginn. Well, that's going to go in the books as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. So here are the Redskins now to take over. Last week, they got the victory against the San Francisco 49ers. They've got the lead in this one as well right now. They start the drive on the ground. Kamara. He was brought down by Devon Kennard. That is ready. Breeze on the draw against a Kamara. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 12 yards there and a first down. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. All start, offense. That'll make it first and 15. A full start backs him up five, first and 15. 
On play action. Now Breeze. And Stills bringing it in. And he'll be Here taken down, Here but not before he works it past the 50. Give him 16 yards there, and it's a red skin first down. I'm coming after you. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 48-yard line. They run on first down as they're able to get this forward for about four. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. From the 45 on second down, Breeze. Well, this is caught by Ginn. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings' 31-yard line. Breeze now. Five straight completions here in this second half. First and ten. Play action. Breeze. He'll take a shot for the... And he takes it in. Touchdown, Washington. Ten again. His second touchdown of the game, his third on the year. And the Redskins are able to stretch the lead out further. In order to lead in a game, you're going to get plenty of contributors, but that's his second touchdown catch of this game. He's one of the key guys in this one. And you better believe he'll be looking for the hat trick here as this one continues to go. Now gold for the extra point. And that will bump the lead up to 26. That time a six-play drive. And it was polished off by a Redskin touchdown. After the touchdown, it's Robbie Gold now to kick it away. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times the punter goes to the side and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep him warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now from all the work he's getting. That'll be marked as a 27-yard pickup. In Washington territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 47. Now Rosen. And he fires a strike to his big target, Demarius Thomas. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. They threw the screen to the perimeter, but to no benefit at all. Tackle behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of yardage. On second down. It's Cohen, and he's got it across the midfield stripe and into Washington territory. So that one will get him halfway to the first down marker. Seven yards makes it third and seven now. But you've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. They take a shot downfield there, but it winds up falling incomplete. We have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long, and they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. It's our field. It's our field. Wait back. It's our house. Wait back. They begin on the ground with Kamara. A big chunk on the ground there, 27 yards. They just look like they're having fun out there. Big lead, there's another big play on the big run. I mean, they can't be stopped. I'm a little bit older than you, as you well know, partner, and you tend to tell me that all the time, but uh, it used to be a big time song. And Got a man, it's caught inside the 10. And he is finally out of bounds, just shy of the five, all the way down at the six. Now a chance to make that big play really hurt. It's first and goal just outside the five. Try to pound it in, Kamara. A nifty move on the run, but ultimately stops short of the goal line down at the two. Give him four on the carry there. It's second and goal. 
From the two now, second and goal. They'll try to punch it in with Miller. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Redskins. Lamar Miller, his sixth touchdown of the season as his guys continue to pour it on. Could not block that one any better. Everyone was accounted for and a great surge by the offensive line. Gold to add the extra point. And the lead grows even larger here in the third quarter. A four-play drive spanning 80 yards. And Lamar Miller caps it off with a touchdown run. After the touchdown, it's Robbie Gold now to kick it away. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Josh Rosen and company getting set for their next possession. And right now, probably just one thing in his mind, it's getting back to the hot start because he's really faded. And ordinarily when that happens, the quarterback, as you know, is usually the leader of the squad. Now there's probably a, a silent camaraderie that comes around him saying, hey, guess what? We got you. Don't worry about it. Let's go, big fella, because they know more times than not, he tends to pick things up, and they tend to play well. First down, a run with Cohen. And it's Reuben Foster in on the tackle. Again, it's Cohen, and very little daylight there. He'll get a couple up to the 44. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. And we return welcoming you back to Minneapolis. And this is a blowout so far as we get set for the fourth quarter. A very one-sided affair. Watch the screen, watch the screen. On third down, Rosen. He finds his man, the tight end Olsen. And he will have the first down as he gets this to the 47. Out of the gun, here's Josh Rosen. And he's got a man, Demarius Thomas. It's a gain of 11 as the Vikings pick up the first. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. From the gun, it's Rosen. This will be caught by Brown. Give him a couple on the catch at second and eight. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Draw play, Cohen. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. 12 yards there and a first down. Well, definitely see some open running lanes, and he's taking advantage of it right now, but that shouldn't be a surprise. Defense has the lead. They're playing for the pass first. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. So after the incompletion, second and 10 from the 22. To throw is Rosen. Screenplay, Johnson. Pushing the foul, roughing the passer, defense. So mark off the yardage for roughing the passer. And I've seen this before on a screen pass. Now are you rushing the passer? You're rushing him deeper than normal. And I think a little frustration kicks in at the end. You're going to hit him anyway when you shouldn't. And give him five that time as they draw a bit closer here for a second and goal. Well, he did get a taste the previous week. He got into the end zone trying his best to get there in this game. So far, he's been denied. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. Third and goal, Rosen. He's got his man. It's taken in for a freaking touchdown. Luke Wilson, his second touchdown on the season. And the Vikings are able to close the gap just a bit. 
No surprise there. Third and goal down here. That's where they're going to look for their tight end. Yeah, you want that big guy running his routes because it doesn't matter who they cover him with. If it's another big guy, he might use his bulk against him. If it's a shorter defender, he might go over the top. Either way, you tend to find a little bit of a mismatch in that area. Prater for the extra point, and that trims the lead a bit, but still standing at 26 points. So that one a long 11-play drive, and it all culminates in a touchdown for Minnesota. After the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. This fielded at the two. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. comes Washington's offense as they get set to take over here. We've got a lopsided no way, game no here. I don't know, Charles, what does the handbook say that we, we discuss when we've got a game like this in the fourth quarter? Hold on a second. Let me, let me thumb to the proper page on that. Know what it says? What? Let's discuss how we got here. This is a dominant performance. Where they took control of this game. How they've managed to keep control of this game. And then we go ahead and think about how we're going to leave here and get to the airport. In a lopsided blowout, the roads are usually open. He can't hang. What's not? He's not going to get me. What's not? On the ground, this is Camara. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. That's it. That's it. Big hit. A good run got seven on first. Here's second and three. Watch the screen. They run it again with Camara. Kamara's got the first down and then so. And he'll get this down to the 39-yard line. Uh, he's still rumbling, isn't he? Still looking fresh in this one despite the heavy workload. But you and I both know. Well conditioned, and he did tell us that he thrives on being at his peak late in ball games. Ready. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Out of the pistol look, it's Miller. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. Now on second and 13. Breeze again has it complete. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. It's a pickup of 12, and that'll set up a third down. They'll try to run for it with Miller. And he's able to pick up the first before he's taken down at the 27. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. Come on, baby. They stay on the ground. This time it's Kamara. And not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. The busy night continues for Kamara. And down inside the 15 he goes. 11 yards there, first down. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? First seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. Eric Ebron, the big tight end, is intended target. And that'll bring up second down. On the ground, Kamara. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. Now Breeze on third down. And he's going to go down. Sacked right around the 17. L.J. Collier in there to record the second sack of his young NFL career. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. So it's three more points, and that widens this thing out even further here in the fourth. And you know in this league, you can never have enough points, but this widens it out, as you said, and now it's all about ball control, isn't it? We got this. Break the 
Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. On second down now, it's Cohen. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. It's a first down on a gain of 10. What makes a draw play like that successful? Well, we did see where he made the first wave miss, and that was a big part of it. But a lot of it is just being actors back there. Making the defense think it's going to be a pass. He can't avoid the pressure. Redskins get there. Jonathan Allen able to record his fifth sack of the season. That right now, that's a defeated team out there. I think you can see it totally in their body language. Hands on hips, heads low. Uh, it's just been a struggle from the start. Yeah, this team has been thoroughly beaten right from the word go. On second down, it's Cohen. They get five yards on the run there. Still left staring at a third and about 14. It's a game of five. Brings up third. Third and long here for Rosen. And that's knocked away and incomplete. Bradley Roby there defensively. Now defensively, you look at the numbers. Another incomplete pass that we just saw. And they're under 200 yards passing for the game. So they've done their job on that side of the ball. Yeah, recently I was actually working a game where a quarterback had a streak of five straight games without a 200-yard game. And that was a big talk, both in his town and amongst his team. How do we get the passing game going? So big credit to them, holding them under 200 today. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. They'll run. This is Kamara. He takes this one across the 35 to the 36, a gain of about four. Come on. A gain of four. It's now second and six at the 36. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. It's a loss of four. Now third down. An extra defender in the secondary for the Vikings here on third down. And we are inside at two minutes left in this lopsided affair. So it's Redskin football here as we welcome you back. They've got a third down now as they look for one more first down to help salt this one away. Running with Kamara. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 12 yards is the pickup, and it's good for a Washington first down. So after the run by Kamara, now another first and 10. That's caught out wide by Stills. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense. They're down here in the fourth, and that personal foul penalty is not going to help. No, in these types of situations, players will tell you that's extra intensity. From where we sit, it's actually frustration. Not a good play. Here's a run on first down that doesn't accomplish anything. In fact, he's going to be tackled behind the line for a loss of one. It'll be a loss of a yard, and it'll be second and 11. Finally, defensively, they have a little clip to show positive for actually stopping him running the football. It's been a really long night for them, hasn't it? So they got a little bit of a win there, but let's face it. The vision that he's had running the football has carried his feet to the open spaces and to big yardage all night long. On second down, here's Miller. And it's been like this all night long. Nowhere to run as they stop him behind the line. It's a loss of two, now third down. But Charles, it's one thing to win, it's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Why were they clicking on offense? They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feeling like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. 
So for Washington, a loss would have really hurt as it stands. They finished the first half at three and five. And now they'll get the weekend off as they get a little extra time to prepare to face the Buffalo Bills. Meanwhile, for the Vikings, things are kind of getting ugly as they drop to one and seven now on the year. And they'll try to get back to their winning ways next week as they head to KC to take on the Chiefs. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, we thank our entire crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. This is the NFL on EA Sports.